We're joined now by the number two Republican in the House, Steve Scalise. Uh, Congressman, thank you for joining us this morning. You just heard uh, Chairman Engel right there saying you all are moving the goalposts, that President Trump is going to have the same rights that President Clinton and President Nixon had once it gets to the Judiciary Committee. Well, good morning, George. And there were a lot of things there uh, that need to be unraveled. First of all, this is nothing like uh, the Clinton and the Nixon impeachment. Uh, the, both sides got to call witnesses under Clinton and under Nixon. Uh, the president's legal counsel was in the room, able to ask questions to the witnesses. Well, the president's uh, going to president have that Trump right in the Judiciary legal Committee, counsel isn't he? Here. The president is going to have that right once it gets to the Judiciary Committee. Well, there's no guarantee of that. In fact, the resolution they just passed in a very partisan way uh, gives the chairman the full discretion uh, to kick the president's legal counsel out of the room and to veto any witnesses that we would call. That was in the resolution. We had an amendment, by the way, George, to change that. Uh, they didn't accept any Republican amendments. They didn't negotiate with the White House on that resolution. Under Clinton and Nixon, uh, there was a bipartisan negotiation to at least have fair rules. They don't want fair rules. They just want to hurt but President Trump's chances to win re-election. It's all about reversing the results of the 2016 election. There are no high crimes or misdemeanors. You, ju you just heard Chairman Engel say it's all about the president's conduct. And, of course, that issue is President, Tr president Trump's attempts to get Ukraine to investigate his domestic political opponents. His own nominee for ambassador to Russia, Deputy Secretary of State John Sullivan, was asked about that on Capitol Hill this week. Let's watch. Do you think it's ever appropriate for the president uh, to use his office to solicit investigations into a domestic political opponent? Soliciting investigations into a domestic political opponent, uh, I don't think that would be in accord with our, our values. Very clear statement right there from the Deputy Secretary of State that it's wrong for the president to solicit investigations into domestic political opponents. Do you agree? Well, first of all, that's not what was happening on the phone call. Even when the president said, will you do me a favor, he then went on to ask about CrowdStrike. That wasn't about Joe Biden. And so taking that out of context no, it's about is his something domestic, a lot of it's Democrats It's about his do. domestic political opponents. And, it, it, and the, pre, the, the transcript clearly shows the president was asking the Ukrainian president to investigate his political opponents, both the Democrats in 2016, Joe Biden going forward. Do you think that was appropriate? That wasn't, first of all, about political opponents. The law, George, requires President Trump or any president, when they're sending foreign aid, taxpayer money to another country, to first ensure that that country is rooting out corruption. He and Zelensky were talking about that on the phone call. The That's only a law, two by the way, that most Democrats The only voted two instances he raised were CrowdStrike in 2016 involving the Democrats, Burisma in 2017 and 18 involving Joe Biden. Again, it's just a very simple question. Do you think it's appropriate for the president to ask the Ukrainians or the Chinese, which he's also done in public, to investigate his domestic political opponents? Well, first of all, on that call, he was not talking about the 2020 election or political opponents. He was talking about corruption relating to the 2016 election. That's not what the transcript By the way, shows. When Russia tried to interfere, George, when Russia tried to interfere with our election, it was Barack Obama who was president, not Donald Trump. President Trump has a legal requirement to ensure that the country given, given foreign aid, in this case Ukraine, is taking steps to root out corruption. And he and President Zelensky talked about that. Zelensky, in fact, was asked, did he think it was inappropriate? Was there pressure put on him? And President Zelensky said he was not pressured. I, I didn't and ask he got about, the money, ultimately. I, I didn't ask about money. pressure. I, I asked about the, the, the phone call and actually all the other testimony that's come, at, that's come out this week uh, in the last couple of weeks from Ambassador Taylor, from Colonel Vidman, from Fiona Hill. They all show a, a, a process where the White House visit military aid was conditioned on the, the Ukrainians pursuing an investigation. But I asked a question, even a step removed from that. Is it okay for the president to ask the Ukrainians to look... But that's, but that's not accurate look, either, George. Is it okay for the president to ask the Ukrainians to investigate his political opponents? It wasn't about a political opponent. It was about corruption that had happened prior. First of all, Pre Joe Biden, when he was vice president of the United States, that's what we're talking about, when he was vice president, bragged that he went to Ukraine and withheld the money. He said, I'm not leaving. In six hours, I'm leaving with the billion dollars that was our taxpayer money, unless you fire the prosecutor that happened to be looking into his son. Joe Biden bragged about that. That's not a, a question of fact. It did happen. And so Ukraine had a lot of concerns about corruption. Zelensky got elected on a platform to root out corruption, and he was focused on that. They talked about that on the call. In the meantime, President Trump had already authorized the sale of Javelin missiles so that Ukraine could stand up to Russia. 
President, Biden, uh, President uh, B Obama and Joe Biden would not send those Javelin missiles so, to so, Ukraine. I don't know why they withheld them, but President Trump sold them to help Ukraine stand up to so, Russia. So your position is not that it's okay for the president to solicit political investigations into his opponents. It's, you're saying, according you, you believe it just didn't happen? It wasn't about the 2020 election. It was about what had happened prior in 2016, corruption in Ukraine. And again, the law requires the president to certify that a country before they get foreign aid is actually taking steps to root out corruption. Uh, Pelosi voted for that, Schiff voted for that. I would imagine Elliot Engel voted for that. The, the, uh, but at the end of the day, the president was talking to Zelensky about rooting out corruption, and Zelensky himself said there was nothing wrong with the call. He, he wasn't pressured, and he got the money. He actually he got the taxpayer he money. He only mentioned crowd striking the Bidens. Law. But so uh, there was also a very clear example, the president in public asking the Chinese to investigate Joe Biden. Is that okay? Well, that was a rhetorical thing that he threw out there, I think more to get the press all riled up, which clearly he did. Uh, but in the end, George, what you're seeing Democrats talk about is using impeachment to try to hurt Trump's chances in 2020. In fact, the lead author of the Articles of Impeachment said, if they don't impeach President Trump, he will get reelected. That's not why you have impeachment. It's for high crimes and misdemeanors. I mean, Alexander Hamilton warned about days like this where impeachment would be used for political reasons, not because there was a crime committed. They've not laid out a crime. In fact, President Trump gave the money to Ukraine. Zelensky acknowledged that. He wasn't even aware it was withheld. But law, current law, that Democrats voted for requires the president, before he sends taxpayer money to Ukraine, to ensure they're rooting out corruption. That's what they were talking and, about. And on the, the Defense call. Department had certified that they were working to do that. Final question, you will have the chance to propose witnesses. Who do you want to call? Well, there are a lot of people. I mean, the whistleblower themselves, this is a person who claims to be a whistleblower, but even the IG reported uh, that this person has a political uh, bias. There are many reports out there that the whistleblower actually worked for Joe Biden. Uh, that concerns a lot of people. There are also a lot of reports that Adam Schiff and his staff coached the whistleblower prior to the whistleblower report being released. Those are all serious questions when somebody behind closed doors in secret is trying to take out a sitting president. There are a lot of questions that haven't been answered. We can't see the transcripts still. I wish those were held in public, uh, like the Nixon and the Clinton trials. This is nothing like Nixon and Clinton. Uh, they're literally going behind closed doors uh, to deny rights to uh, not only the Republicans uh, and President Trump, but to the American people. The vast majority of the American people have no idea except leaked reports that in many cases turned out uh, to be invalid or false when you talk to people that were actually in the room. But we can't see that because it's closed to the public. Congressman Scalise, thanks for your time this morning. Great to be with you, George.